Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. We're talking about water for the globe. We're going beyond now well over 7 billion people to 9 billion by 2038 is the estimate. And so how do we provide water for all living beings on planet Earth? This is the challenge that was carved out over three decades ago. That's a long time in today's world. Global Water Group, Alan M. Weiss, he's president, CEO, inventor. And we're going to be talking about a how do you use really dirty, filthy water, almost beyond uh, brown water, almost black water. And so he's going to be talking to us about how the technologies they have that can take that black water and turn it into something that's actually drinkable. But we look at this map around the globe and we see how uh, the expanding areas as far as the, the bright orange, the red, even the yellow. And so we have real challenges on planet Earth. And Alan, tell us what are the challenges that we have as far as potable water and uh, where we're headed right now if we don't change anything. Right now, we are contaminating our water faster than it can rejuvenate itself. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, and uh, looking at this map, I tell you, it just uh, really is almost frightening to look at the the, all the areas across the globe that are in dire straits. Now we're going to uh, show this image and we're going to come back and revisit this uh, right at the end, Alan. Tell us quickly what we're looking at and why is this so important? Well, we're looking at, at building a unit that will be able to provide purified water to communities that don't have power. And here we have a solar powered system and a wind powered system. Both solar and wind will be generating energy in, in stored in batteries. And we designed this so that there'd be enough battery power to last for 10 days mm. so that whether you had clouds or you had rain or you had anything else, and it would constantly be working, purifying water for a community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is incredible. Now, this is uh, this is something I ask you really to design for me, and you have already done this and done it dozens of times around the globe. Uh, but we keep talking about these very simple systems uh, can be uh, wind and uh, uh, air uh, powered. And at the same time, we can be using solar, we can be using low flow hydro. Uh, if it's to have enough, it's wave action. So why is this system? It's very simple. But why is it so important? Well, most communities around the world don't have water utilities that are purifying the water. So where are you getting your water? You're getting your water from a local river, stream, lake, ponds, anywhere you can get water. Mm -hmm. And rivers are notoriously very dirty. Mm -hmm. And so we designed this so that we can get that dirt out of the system and then purify the water, and then you'll be able to deliver it to the people in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what we're looking at here is that actually, when you say deliver it to the community, really deliver this to the community, because we're looking at uh, you know, what we'd use for uh, milk uh, tanks in the United States and uh, providing the water so that they're not using old 
gasoline or uh, diesel tanks. Now, we're just going to go slowly through this, Alan. So let's take our time, uh, talk about each one of these features and why is it they're so important. Well, the first thing from a river is we're going to use submersible pumps in order to pull the water from the river. Now, you do that and in such a way as the actual pumping mechanism is below the surface because you're going to get more debris and, and dirt floating on the top and you got a problem of dirty bed water. So you have to get it sort of in the middle mm -hmm. as best you can and you have to create and, and make a platform that will be secure depending on how bad that river is in pulling it. So you have to anchor it in place and you're now going to pump it up mm -hmm. to the to the water system itself. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at this uh, dual filtration, why dual filtration? Well, you, what you have to be doing is you're going to be running through one of the dual, one of the two tanks, and you're going to be filtering all of the dirt down to some lower amount, hopefully in the level of about 10 microns, which is even below what you would ever see in a clear glass of water, but not down to the level where you're purifying and taking out parasites or hazardous chemicals or anything else. But you gotta get the dirt out of there, it's sand and dirt. And as soon as the first tank fills up, you'll have a computer system that'll automatically say, okay, let's switch to the second tank and I'm going to have a back flush tank, the little blue spot you see in the middle of the two. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to now back flush the first tank to make it clean and ready to take dirt again while we're filling the second. And the back flush tank is constantly refilled after it does its back flushing. It takes the next batch of clear water and automatically fills up and waits for the tank to fill up by everything done by pressure in a computer control system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's very important to understand. Now, battery array, why do you have batteries uh, in this? You know, you're going to be uh, using maybe even uh, wave action from the river itself. Uh, you have the wind and solar. Why batteries? Wind and solar don't mean anything. One is a fan that's turning a generator. And the solar is an energy source. But during the day, if you have a lot of sunlight, you may be able to use that power. But if you're going to run 24-7, there's no sun at night. And mm -hmm. if it rains or it's cloudy, you don't have any solar power. So what you have to do is run your solar, solar power to be at a high enough level to recharge two complete rows of batteries. Mm. These are the highest tech military batteries on the market. And that's a good technology that they're making better every day. Mm. So we have to have enough power left in those batteries. So if you don't have wind and you don't have sun, that you can keep running the system because the people still need the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Now, what is a back flush and why is that important? You mentioned that earlier. Uh, but so why is that so important? Well, you have to now clear out that first tank that's sifting out all of the dirt and sand. Well, you don't want to put that dirt and sand and wash it back into the river where you are because you'll just pick it up again. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is have a pipe go further downstream and disperse it so it's not going to be an ecological problem. And it also disperses that dirt downstream. Now, we're looking at this purified water storage, and this is something that's critically important. You and I have talked about this a, a great deal. So uh, about the tanks, how do we keep them uh, truly purified? And then also I want to incorporate in this conversation, Alan, what we need to do once this, hour, this water is delivered to the villages and people are bringing out their buckets and their their mugs and uh, bottles and all these other kinds of things. And most of those have been contaminated by, you know, who knows what. And so you can make all the purified water you want, but if you're getting it in a dirty container to take it back into your house, uh, that's not really helping much. Well, you've got a good start here because now all the water that comes through those 
uh, dirt filters. That water is going to go into purifiers. It's going to filter to one micron and remove all hazardous, all parasites. Mm -hmm. It's going to hold all hazardous chemicals and heavy metals. And it's going to use ultraviolet to kill all the bacteria and viruses. So you got purified water. We're going to put them into tanks that are holding purified water. I use dark colored tanks because that will hold it from being contaminated too much. Mm -hmm. We do put chlorine after we've purified the water, which would not create carcinogens, but would keep bacteria from growing while mm. it's in the tanks. And when you bring it into your mobile tankers to bring it into the town, to distribute, that's all it's designed to do is not create bacteria for that. Mm -hmm. You've got a, a road where they'll come along, you'll fill up all your tankers and then we'll go in. The people that are bringing their jugs in to now fill up with water, we will have a system designed that will have Dis disinfection uh, fountains in effect that mm -hmm. they'll just put their jug over and push a button and that will disinfect their jug and then they can put the purified water in and when they go home they got purified water. In fact we'll put a drinking fountain on the other side so that these young people come in there with, with empty jugs for miles. They got to carry this heavy stuff with them on the way back. Water is heavy. So you want them to get a drink of water before they leave. Mm -hmm. I, I, you're, the whole system that you've developed is absolutely brilliant. And this is something is needed in many countries across the African continent, Latin America, Southeast Asia, even the South Pacific Islands. We need the same kind of system. Now, looking at this, this rooftop uh, solar panels, and also you're incorporating the wind generators uh, into this. Tell us what we're looking at here and why is security so uh, wonderfully important, you know, for any of these systems? Well, first of all, they're very valuable and you, you got to protect it. And the, it, the people will become dependent on having quality water. The health of the community will change overnight. Mm -hmm. Children will live instead of die at a young age because of the poor water. Mm -hmm. Everything changes. That's worth securing and defending. Mm -hmm. Now, having the uh, rooftop solar panels, uh, why there? Uh, why not put these on the ground somewhere? Uh, why have them on the rooftop? For, first of all, they're out of the way. Second mm -hmm. of all, they catch the sun rays better. Actually, you can you design your unit where you place it based on the flow of the sun mm -hmm. so that you put the solar panels to collect the maximum amount of energy you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, we're showing this up close as far as uh, the rooftop and uh, the solar panels uh, and the tanks is going to be carrying this into the uh, villages, the towns, even the cities. And also you have these uh, this purified water with the, the spray heads. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful system. But let's go back to this, the solar wind powered humanitarian village purification system. Let's go out on this. We have about 30 seconds, Alan. What do you want to say about this as a recap to our viewers, both here and abroad? This is the end result of what you're going to do in the village uh, because you will have created this and you will have, if you need to have more power, we can put more power there. If you need to have that, I showed the, the disinfectants on the side of the units here mm -hmm. and on the other side of their fountains. Uh, this is, this becomes their source of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this really becomes, almost will be the, the center of the village, the town, uh, different areas of the cities. If you have this this absolutely pure water coming out of those uh, filthy rivers and streams and ponds and all that, this is Alan M. Weiss, President, CEO, Inventor of the Global Water Group. As we create the Emerald Planet.